1974. Preview Show. Hello, welcome back to 1874. It's time for a match preview show as Villa take on Luton on Sunday at two o'clock. I'm joined by my good friend, David Reid. And David, I did do the Claret and Blue podcast last night to talk over Villa's famous European win in Alkmaar, but just to get your thoughts on that result and what was a really, really good performance away from home in Europe. It was just a, a pure joy to watch, wasn't it, last mm. night? Um, it's it's one of those nights and you... you, you feel like we've been a little bit reflective over the last week or so because it's obviously been a year since you know Emery was appointed and took charge and then they had the victory over West Ham they had the brilliant performance last night and it feels like it's just a nice moment to kind of reflect on how far the club and how far that team has come over the last 12 months or so it was such a good performance last night pretty much fault faultless the perfect away performance showed such maturity as well, I think, after what happened, especially in the in the game against Legia Warsaw away from home. I think it showed such a contrast and such a maturity, that performance last night. And it's just, I mean, I tweeted after the game saying, you know, it's just a pure joy to watch this team at the moment. And, you know, defeats will inevitably come. They will. And I think it's just... No, they about won't. Putting those, it's about never gonna, putting we're those never going to lose again, Dave. <laughs> well, it's about putting those in perspective when they do come and just to kind of be kind of grateful, I guess, to to show how how far this team has come over the last 12 months and, and just really enjoy this period of time because it's it's a gr- really great moment to be an Aston Villa supporter right now. Yeah, do go back and watch that podcast on Claret and Blue. I know it's a it's a rival channel, but you know we all like to help each other out. That those of us that do the Villa Pods, very continental show going on this evening. We've got Ian Walker, might be the former. Spurs goalkeeper. I'm not sure that it is. He says greetings from, from from the Dutch villains. Hopefully, Ian Walker got to the got to the game last night. If he is part of the of the Dutch villains, and we've got Eddie from New York, who I know as well. I took in a game many years ago now when I was in New York with the New York villains. Eddie was a great guy, and I went to one of his favourite restaurants. And completely ruined the evening, to be honest, by being too drunk. So he says it's perfect to listen to on his bike ride home. So ride back safely, Eddie. Ian Walker does say atmosphere in, in Amsterdam was absolutely tingling. We've got Gaz from Birmingham, not so not so continental Gaz, for, Gaz from Birmingham, but, you know, we're happy to have everyone here with us tonight for a, for a late night match preview. Dave, do you think anyone who, you know, like Bailey came in, he's not been in the team recently. Tillemans played very well. I thought he's not been in the team, as we all know. You know, Longley probably won't come in. That's obvious. You know, Diego Carlos was back in the side. Do you think anyone who wasn't in the team for the West Ham game has played themselves into the eleven on Sunday. I just think it's too difficult at the moment to to say that for any with any kind of certainty. I just think, given how well they played against West Ham, I can't foresee anybody forcing their way into the side unless not even Bailey, Pizzaniola. Well, potentially. I mean, if something I saw a few few uh, stories flying around about his his tribunal in Italy happening, but I, I don't know anything about that really. So whether that kind of filters through into into Sunday and selection-wise, I'm not too sure. But if you're going on form and fitness and if everybody's fit and from what we hear today, it's been obviously a recovery day for the players. So tomorrow they'll really get a, a look at how everyone's kind of pulled up after the game uh, in, in Alkmaar. So... If you were going form and fitness, I don't think anybody has played their way into the first eleven. I think it was just great to see Tielemans and great to see Bailey playing with a little bit of freedom, playing with a little bit of confidence and really asserting themselves in that eleven for the game yesterday. And they both had different kind of jobs to do in that game yesterday. And I thought they carried it out really well. I just don't I just don't feel like you, you can really drop anyone out of that Premier League side for the moment. I, just, I think Bailey's possibly done enough. You know, he's come off the bench a few times and and scored goals. Was very lively again last night. I've just got a feeling Luton at Villa Park might be his kind of game. We've spoke previously about him being kind of a a Villa Park player, a, a home player. Just I don't know, maybe that extra trickery in the side. And he must be confident at the moment. He's the one who I think will be closest to, to breaking into that eleven. I, I agree with with what you're saying, but I just think if you look over the last maybe three four games, I think maybe Bailey's Bailey's done enough now. Yeah, I think if there was if there's going to be one, it'd be him. If there's going to be one, it, it'd be him. I just um, 
for, for me anyway, if, if everybody from that West Ham game is fit and available and doesn't have anything else going on, then I think it, the kind of team picks itself right now. And I think, you know, Bailey will be coming in with a lot of confidence. I think, it, you know, it's good to have players in form to come off the bench as well right now. And yeah. um, I think, you know, Bailey has shown that he is now in a really good moment for himself. So, you know, if he comes off the bench again, I, I would expect him, if he doesn't start, to at least get minutes. I think he would come off the bench again. So hopefully, if and when he does, then uh, he's able to continue that form. Uh, that he's shown in the past couple of games. Do you think this game's a, a little bit of a banana skin? Villa are on an on a exceptional run at home. 11 wins in a row is absolutely incredible in the Premier League. Not something I've seen in, in my lifetime that I remember as, as a Villa fan. And we've beat some really good teams at Villa Park. And actually, we've dispatched some of those really good teams relatively comfortably as well. This, to me, I'm not. I think we will win. But I actually think this may turn into a into a tough game because I think Luton will come and, and defend and they're off the back of a, a decent away performance coming back from 2-0 down and get salvaging a point from Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I mean, potentially. I don't think, you know, Villa fans and we should be looking at this game and thinking Villa just need to turn up and they'll they'll win because a lot of people wrote off Luton at the start of the season. Um, I saw them a couple of times in the championship. I was lucky enough to go to the championship playoff final. They're really hard to play against as an opposition. And, you know, no team has kind of tonked Luton this season. They've only, if when they have lost, they've only lost by the odd goal. Mm. So I don't think, you know, people should be going to the game on Sunday thinking we just need to turn up and roll them over three or four nil. That's a, it's a possibility that that could happen. But I just don't foresee... You know, given what the evidence that we've seen so far this season, Luton aren't the type of side to roll over. Um, they are a very difficult side to play against. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've done okay as well post European football this season. I think beat only, Chelsea. I mean, the Wolf, yeah, beat Chelsea. I think we only lost to Liverpool, maybe, um, and then obviously the draw against Wolves, and which is a decent point, I would say. Yeah, to, absolutely. To go, Absolutely, I don't think we, you know, we've got absolutely the right to go there and win. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a difficult place to go, Molyneux. So I think on the whole, we've done okay. On the whole, we've done okay. But I think Unai Emery pointed out today, in, um, in, in the kind of roundtable interview that he did ahead of this game when he talked about Luton uh, going to Everton uh, after Everton had beaten Villa in the cup. Luton went to Everton and beat them. So. Yeah. And he showed that was a, a real sign that this league is pretty much anyone's game. Like anybody can beat anybody on the day. And, it, you know, I think that was the message that he was trying to send out today that this is not going to be an easy game. I don't think, you know, the Villa players should be treating this as we just need to kind of rock up and we'll, we'll get the three points because it's, it's not going to be as easy as that. I don't think they will. I feel like we're in that rhythm. I feel like we're in that kind of ruthless mode that we were in towards the back end of last season. Now I think we've started to get into that now where, you know, they don't want to trip up. They want to keep this winning run going. They're, they're on, on a great unbeaten run at the moment. I feel like they want to keep it going and they'll want to keep this home record going as long as possible. And they'll look at the fixtures that are coming up, especially at Villa Park. I think there's a very good chance of, of continuing this winning run at Villa Park. We've got some great names in the chat tonight. Horalio Gomez chats and snacks. So sat there watching a blank screen for the entire Love of Paul McGrath podcast. I mean, hopefully will be more entertaining than the blank screen that that, that, that he's watched on, on on this show, Dave. If we're not, there'll be some be some serious problems. And John says Luton's performances are steadily improving. I'll I'll go along with that. I think I've watched three ninety minutes of of Luton games so far this season. I watched their first game of the season against Brighton. Actually, they did lose four one that day, but it, it was their first their first four eight. Well, they're their only four eight back in, back into the Premier League. They've never never been there before, so. I actually thought they were lucky that day as well. The game, that game kind of hinged on moments. And I think I think you're right, Dave. They've, they've been in every game, even if they've lost. It, it has been narrow except for that first game of, of the season. And they've got some useful players. They're, they're pretty good from set players as well. We'll have to be wary of that. I thought Villa handled that well against West Ham. We didn't seem to give away too many dead, dead ball situations. I think it would have to be a similar kind of thing against Luton. But you want to talk about, uh, I mean, someone just said what kind of, Gasbo said, what kind of reception will Nakamba get? I mean, it's a, it's a former Villa midfield, isn't it, for, for, for Luton? Nakamba and Barkley coming back. I know you said before we came on you wanted to talk about Ross Barkley, one of your one of your favourite players to ever don a Villa shirt, Dave. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think those words have ever come out of my mouth. Um... I, I said I've got a Ross Barkley shirt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. 
No, I, th I just think, I, I, well, firstly, I think Ross Barkley will probably start on Sunday. I think he'll probably come in for Tahith Chong. Um, and I just, you know, alongside Nakamba, I just kind of wanted to talk about really the, the Ross Barkley that we saw in a, in a Villa shirt. And I was, it, the reason I was thinking about it was because I was thinking about when was the last time, <laughs> it's gonna, this is going to sound weird, when was the last time I felt this good watching Aston Villa? And it was probably 2020, 2021, and the, the Grealish, Watkins, Barkley, um, and we had, the, he made his debut in the 7-2 against Liverpool. Uh, Arsenal away that season was tremendous. Um, and for some reason, there's a game that sticks in my head. I think it was Burnley away where we absolutely dominated the game, contrived to lose it, I think, 3-2. Yeah, I remember it. But I remember watching that game and I was thinking, this is unbelievable football we're playing. Grealish was on fire. And the reason I remember that game in particular was because uh, I, I, I was sat here at home watching the game on my own and I turned around to my missus who is not interested in football one bit and I said, this is, this is the best I've seen Villa play in years, like since the Martin O'Neill days when we were going through that time and she was obviously not fussed whatsoever. Um, but we saw probably the best and the worst of Ross Barkley in that, in that season because he came... He came to Villa and he, you know, when we signed him on loan, I think we were looking at him and Ruben Loftus cheek at the time and we ended up taking Ross Barkley on loan. And the, the premise of him coming was to enable him to get back into the England squad for the European Championships the following year. And everything started off going in the, in the right direction. There was almost a kind of, you know, there was a real synchronicity between Watkins, between Grealish, between Barkley and the way we were going forward up front. Was, was a joy to watch at times. And then I think he had a hamstring injury, which he suffered, you know, he missed a lot of games over the kind of back end of the year and into the start of the year. And then never really recovered. There was a period where I think we were playing like six games in three weeks or something, and he was basically playing to get fit again and never really hit hit that sort of form again. And nah. it was a time when, when Villa were going through a difficult patch as well. Uh, and he kind of bore the brunt of I think a few of the supporters' frustrations really just because he wasn't he, he didn't really have the physical output that we expected of him and that's you know not necessarily chipping in with goals and assists but it was more the kind of on the eye test the, the physicality the running the tackling the interceptions that you know he wasn't he wasn't producing at that, at that point in time and then it, it pretty much kind of ended for him ending for him sour, sourly I mean the, I think that when we got the loan deal in, there was all the intention to make that a permanent deal at the end of the year. And the, 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 the fee was something like £30 million that was being talked about. And at the start of that year, you know, I think there was a few fans that were like, sign him up, let's get it yeah, done quickly were, and, and get it in. And then by the end of the year, it was like, thanks very much. That was a kind of expensive mistake given the, the amount of wages that we were, we were paying him at that point. But I think that, you know, that the start of that summer, it was the same summer, wasn't it? I think that um, Watkins and... Cash and Martinez and those players came in and you know that was that's the start of this era that we're in now. So he's played his part. Um, not sure what what kind of reception he'll get. I think probably Nakamba will probably get a better reception. Nakamba will get a day someone. I think people will forget um, about but forget Barkley played for us. In all honesty, some people. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah. But um, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on at the weekend because you know if you're thinking about Luton playing in a kind of defensive mindset. Um, men behind the ball. I think his passing range is something that they'll be needing if they're going to try and hit us on the counter attack. I think um, of Benny down the right hand side. Uh, he's a, he's got pace to burn. You know, if he he'll be one to watch down the right. Um, and then Carlton Morris up front, who I've seen a few times, and he and he is like he is horrible to play against. He's got Carlton something, Morris. hasn't he, Morris? Yeah, Definitely he has. Something. He has. I think he's got the ability, probably, to make it at this level um, at the Premier League level. He, you know. He's a nuisance. He backs in a little bit like Antonio, really. Backs in, uses his elbows, uses his backside, and actually can run the channels as well. I think he's got a little bit about him. If it just needs to kind of improve that end product, really, and if he can get start to get a few goals, you know, this could be a year for him where you know, say, if Luton do go down, there might be a couple of clubs looking at him for next year. I do still think with Barclay, you know, he's not had the career he should have had because he's definitely got the. The, the technical ability. He's a, he's been a good footballer, but I don't think up here he's not, he's, he's not quite got it. And he was he was very much a, a Jack Grealish signing. He was a player that Grealish pushed heavily 
for, for the club to bring in and the club went with it and they, they brought him in. You know, at the start, you did think with that link-up, we were like, we're, we're going to go somewhere here. But it but it didn't work out. But he is the kind of player that on on any given day, and these days have happened less and less over the years, he could just do nothing and crack one in from 25 yards against Villa. You do still have to watch him because he does have that that raw ability. And there's another former Villa player ret- returning, to the, returning to the club. That's Rob Edwards. Played, played for Villa as well briefly. A lot of people won't, won't remember that, but he came through the Villa Academy and, and played a few games for, for the first team. I remember him having a great game against Chelsea under Graham Taylor. We won 2-1 and Marcus Allback scored twice. Rob Edwards played right back that day and hit a, hit a lovely lob that hit the bar. And I, I remember watching him thinking, oh, it's a, there's a good player here. He's going to He's going to make it. He's going to come through, come through the year system, and then I think he was properly sold. Like in the in the next twelve months, he was he was gone down to gone down to lower league. But you know, Rob Edwards coming back, he's, he's done well in his managerial career. You know, done really well to to get Luna. It wasn't treated very well at Watford. Did well at Forest Green, and actually, the where well, he worked at Wolves for a bit as well. With I think it was either their reserves or their their under twenty one side, but he. You know, he was very highly thought of there and he's a very good football mind and it's good good to see him doing well and getting a team in the Premier League and getting his chance after the way Watford treated him. Yeah, um, I think he may have even taken charge of Wolves potentially as a caretaker. Yeah, he did, he did. I remember reading that. And he, spent, article. Um, and he spent time at the FA as well. I'm not sure where that fitted into his career, whether that, was, that might have been after he left Wolves. He went into the FA um, and did a little bit of coaching with the England age groups and... I think, you know, if, if you're thinking about style of play for Rob Edwards, I think Luton is a, a little bit away from his ideal. Um, yeah, when you go along about with that. The football that he played at Forest Green, the football that he probably coached with England and England group levels. Um, but you're right, obviously didn't spend a, a great deal of time at Watford. Badly trained. Well, as, as many managers are, some might argue, at, at Watford. Um, and then obviously, you know, going to Watford's greatest rivals probably in in Luton Town and and managed to get them up um, playing, you know, a more direct style of football, I think it's fair to say. I mean, Adebayo and Morris are, you know, I've already talked about Morris, but similarly, they're a handful up front, very physical. They look for big diagonals. Uh, when they play three, I think they'll probably go with four at the back against Villa just because I don't think they've gotten that many fit centre halves now. I think Reese Burke's been ruled out today and he's been one of their one of their key defenders. So when they're, certainly when I've seen them with a, when they were playing three at the back, they like to play big diagonals up to the front men, bring it down and, and fight for those second balls. So, you know, I think no doubt they'll be playing defensively against Villa, but I think it's, you know, it's one of those where you've got to concentrate and um you know, be fully concentrated when they try and break and, and really, really be able to kind of suffocate them. I think that's what Villa will be trying to do, um, kind of manage to manage the game well, show that maturity that they did against Altmar, because it may not be straightforward. It may take time. No, I think it, I think this will be a tough game. We've, we've dispatched teams, like I said at the start, scoring a fair few guys. You know, you'll, you'll always back us to score, especially at home. In fact, we've scored in every home game. Under Emery, I'm pretty confident in, in that start, which, which is just incredible considering you know how poor we were in front of goal before he came in. You know the, the home form is just absolutely stupendous at the moment. You look forward to going to Villa Park every single time that, that, that we have a home game. We don't do score predictions on this channel anymore because since we've stopped doing it, we just we haven't unbeaten. So we're going to continue to not predict the game, but I do think this one will be tight. But Dave, who is Villa's key man on Sunday? Key man on Sunday. Specifically I am for go, this game. Yeah, specifically for this game. Uh, I am going to go with John McGinn this okay. week just because he played so well yesterday. The pass uh, for the assist for Tielemans was absolutely outstanding. Oh, Got a goal God, himself. Um, and he's just a machine, you know, at the moment. And every time he, he you know, he's selected, he's on the pitch and he's... And he's dropping eight or nines out of ten. So hopefully he can do the same on on Sunday. I would like I would like us to keep a clean sheet. I think that's one area where I think Unai Emery will be targeting um, because uh, you know it's the goals we've conceded recently haven't exactly been key goals. But I think a clean sheet at home would would feel nice. 
yeah, I'm not too worried about the clean sheets at the moment because if you look at how many goals we have conceded, we're never really conceding more than one a game since that since that Liverpool uh, when Liverpool beat us quite easily. So I think because we always score and we always tend to score more than one in the, in the main, I think the fact that we do we are conceding doesn't really bother me at the moment. But I, I get what you're saying; it would, would be nice to keep a clean sheet. And with with that in mind, I'm actually going to choose Emmy Martinez as the key player for this game. It might sound stupid. But I've got a feeling that we'll dominate the game. And I think it might be one of those ones, a bit like the European game at Villa Park a few weeks ago, where you're struggling to break a team down and you're at nil-nil and then suddenly you could get caught cold with something. And I think Greg says this all the time. In most games, Emi Martinez will make one big save. I've just got a feeling on Sunday the game the game will be tight, but Luton will have a moment or have moments. And I've just got a feeling that Emi Martinez will, will do something to, to keep the score as it is at that point. So, yeah, a bit of an odd one from me, but I've, I don't know why. I've just got a, a feeling for something like that. So I'm, I'm going to go with that. That does us for the preview for Villa Luton on Sunday. Thanks ever so much to... For, God, I can't talk. Great right into the podcast. Thanks ever so much to Dave for joining me this evening. And thanks for Lee for jumping on and producing as well. Greg and myself will be back with a pod probably on Monday. We'll probably just do a pod reviewing Sunday's game against Luton. I, I would expect rather than doing a post-match show and a pod talking about the same thing, that's a waste of everybody's time. So we're not going to do that. But I'll talk to Greg and we'll let you know on our social media channels when that is happening. Let's try and hit 500 likes. If we don't hit 500 likes, Villa will not win on Sunday. So make sure if you're watching, you're pressing the likes button. I'm playing on people's superstition here, really, and hoping that people will press the likes button for fear of Villa not winning. Thanks ever so much to those that have tuned in live and joined us on the chat as well. We always appreciate it. Always good to see what you're thinking through the show, even though I'm terrible at trying to keep up with what's going on there because there's a new piece of information every three seconds. Have a good rest of your evening. Have a great weekend. And I'll see those of you that are going to Villa Park on Sunday. Up the Villa.